Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Margaret Howell. It's Wednesday, November 30th, 2016. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, anti-Trump hate crimes continue to sweep America as a U.S. Navy veteran with two young children had his home torched and vandalized by anti-Trump extremists. Then, Apple bans Breitbart from its iTunes news app as the globalist war on real media intensifies. Plus, she's back. Out-of-touch Democrats re-elect Nancy Pelosi. And a road rage fight over a parking space turns into an all-out demolition derby. <laughs> All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, we've covered here in InfoWars the past few weeks unbelievable attacks against Trump supporters, even people that just have an American flag. We have an article that's up on our website. It was written by Paul Joseph Watson, and it talks about how one U.S. veteran was actually attacked. His home was vandalized, torched by anti-Trump extremists. The word cracker was spray-painted on his house. Yet another hate crime attack. We've been covering these for the past few weeks. Now, this Navy veteran, he had two young children in his home. It was vandalized graffitied with racial slurs both inside and out before they set it on fire if you can believe that this of course happening in plant city florida he told the local fox affiliate fox 13 there you know what uh we just want to be able to figure out our problems work together uh he didn't have any ill will towards anyone and here was his crime this is why they targeted him he had three flags flying outside in front of his home, the American flag, a POW flag, and the U.S. Navy flag. That's why they sought him out and did this to his house. Now, they left a few clues behind, and the presumption is that these were Black Lives Matter supporters because of the racial slurs that they were using. Uh, while they set his home on fire, um, which is unbelievable, I can't even imagine this close to Christmas coming out of Thanksgiving, um, you have two small children in the house, and they actually set his house on fire um, they actually spray painted the words F-U-C-K Trump, BLM, and burn everything. So clear agenda with this. And yeah, this is the tolerant left that we keep hearing the mainstream media talking about. You know, people that, that just want to be heard. They're very tolerant and embracing. Unless, of course, you show support for America or for Donald Trump our president-elect. Then you're subject to have your house burned. Just a caveat to this story. And this man's name was Matthew Smith. His home is in foreclosure, and he has no insurance on the house. So they're not able to recover any of the damage done whatsoever to their property. Oh, but guess what? That's all right, because Black Lives Matter, they need to be heard. This is the group that Soros has dumped so much money into funding, because we know that they want to create chaos all across the U.S. We've covered people being beaten, being stomped, their cars being stolen. Now, this veteran having his home set on fire because he supports America. Now, Donald Trump is coming under fire a lot. He's always been coming under fire fire, frankly, but more so now than ever because he's the president-elect. The mainstream media, they have been hounding him relentlessly regarding his business ventures and specifically his investments abroad. Apparently, uh, the community organizer that has been president for eight years, that was barely a senator one term, not even one term, when he took office, that's fine. But if you're a job creator, if you have the audacity to start businesses and employ people, we have a serious constitutional issue. We have an article up on our website written by Paul's brother, Steve Watts, and entitled Trump quits all business to focus on his presidency. He's taking the right approach here and his enemies, they are looking for any way possible to get him out of office even before he begins. Now, the Brookings Institute was cited in this article. I want to take you through specifically what they're saying. They're saying that the U.S. Constitution, of course, we know Brookings is a very left-leaning progressive think tank, if you can call that thinking, in Washington, D.C., and they're saying that the payments and presents and other things of value uh, that would be given to an American political official, including president, that's forbidden. So Trump is going to have to leave behind and sacrifice all of his businesses. The Guardian uh, concluding this earlier in the week, they said Trump was totally wrong when he said the conflict of interest doesn't apply to me. Well, he isn't totally wrong. The Constitution doesn't specify things like this, but he's doing the right thing. He's approaching his detractors with with. Peace, I might add. He's taken to Twitter 
and address the situation. And he's saying, look, I'm going to go ahead two weeks from now and address this. And uh, by the way, we're just going to go ahead and let go of everything. And I'm just going to focus on the American people creating jobs, getting our economy going. Uh, he, we know he's a builder, uh, but his personal interest, he's going to have to leave behind. Uh, this coming out, and of course the media, we understand that they're losing the war. Leanne McAdoo and I cover this later on in the show for you. But I wanted to take you to this report because it is so unbelievable our in-house resident reporter, Joe Biggs, he actually broke this story about Breitbart being dropped from the Apple marketplace. I, they didn't want to even service their customers anymore. And Apple has removed this Breitbart news app from iTunes, the marketplace, in a fantastic censorship of free speech and true journalism. That's what you're going to get here, folks. The mainstream media wants to silence it. They are not happy. Despite Breitbart having over 168 million page views in October alone, they don't seem to care about their bottom line at all. Of course, we know Steve Bannon. He was appointed to head up Donald Trump's presidential campaign. He later transitioned, and he was appointed as chief strategy strategist for the White House, and they have done everything they can to smear Mr. Bannon, to paint him as a white supremacist, a neo-Nazi, you know, something that I found particularly appalling. CNN, they did an expose on my boss, Alex Jones, last night, and they had the audacity to leave the cryon up for seven seconds. I was counting seven seconds where Alex was talking about Donald Trump. And underneath it, this blatant lie, they write, KKK leader is happy about Bannon appointment. It's an unbelievable, you know, unbelievable mind warp that all of them are in. They don't seem to realize all of us are onto them. All of us get it. It's not winning. And Twitter just isn't having it. You know, Twitter should actually write Donald Trump a check because prior to Donald Trump, frankly, who really paid that much attention to Twitter? You know, we do as reporters, but frankly, it skyrocketed because of Donald Trump. And we have this breaking story for you. Twitter, it's considering banning Donald Trump. Here's Joe Biggs with more. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now, we've seen over the last year how Twitter really censors conservative news outlets. Uh, and we had this whole atmosphere being built that there's this uh, epidemic of fake news, when in actuality, the mainstream media has been the fake news. They're the ones that said Donald Trump couldn't win. They're the ones that said that uh, there isn't any voter fraud when there's a woman right now who's going to jail for five years in Iowa for voting multiple times. Voter fraud is real, and the fake news is the mainstream media. And here at InfoWars.com, we've been trying to bust through that whole thing to get through to people. And now we have one of the ultimate trolls our president-elect Donald Trump, who uses Twitter all the time, and it becomes a huge topic of conversation. Like last night on CNN, they were talking literally for hours about how Donald Trump tweets too much. And one of the Republican senators came on and goes, why don't you guys ever get this upset about um, our Second Amendment issue rights? Why don't you ever get this upset about anything else? Instead, you sit around and you're complaining about him going out here and tweeting. And here we have this right here. Twitter says it would consider banning Donald Trump's account. The president-elect of the United States is a notorious troll, a fact which his promise to ban Muslims from entering the country, threat to imprison and strip Americans of citizen, uh, citizenship for exercising their First Amendment rights, and a caveat to that, this is uh, a law that was proposed in 2005 by Hillary Clinton. And what they're talking about is anyone who desecrates, burns a flag, uh, could be sentenced up to a year in jail or a $100,000 fine. Now, that's what Hillary Clinton said back in 2005. Trump said, hey, let's just ban them and uh, they can't be citizens anymore. And, you know, maybe some jail time or something like that. So he's just kind of trolling them like he always does, and they fell for it. But it's at a point right now where Jack Dorsey, Obama's buddy, rubs elbows with Black Lives Matter to Ray McKesson all the time. Is at a point where he is so triggered by President-elect Donald Trump that they would literally go to the point of banning Donald Trump's account. And that would lead to what? A huge exodus from Twitter. That would be the death of Twitter. Everyone from the right would completely leave and go over to Gab. Gab has become this new platform that is given conservatives and so many other people who've been censored over the last few years uh, a chance to actually speak freely. Talk about whatever the topics they want and self-censor and uh, mute out certain things that they don't want to hear. Well, while the media is waging war on Trump, there's an internal war going on in this country, largely fueled by 
the likings of George Soros, Black Lives Matter, that sort of thing. And I'm specifically talking about Charlotte, North Carolina. They are bracing themselves for absolute rioting in the streets. This coming after the officer and Keith Scott shooting escapes charges. We have an article up on our website also written by Paul Joseph Watson. It talks about how Twitter is urging the rioters on the ground in Charlotte to target white areas. I brought you a couple of tweets. They're unbelievable. This one coming out of hashtag broken Jeremy. If you do riot Charlotte, don't make it entertainment for quote them by tearing up your own side of town. Do it downtown. Hey, why not? And then I've got another one. Riot are going to happen. This always happens to us only when Trump white nationalists get shot. That cop will catch a case then. So he's basically calling for a president-elect to be shot because then it will get some attention. You know, let's just ignore the facts surrounding this case. And I'm not denying that there's police brutality in this country. But look, uh, taking to the streets and burning everything down and beating up perfect strangers to deal with it might not be the best course of action. And you might just be a little brainwashed. Just food for thought there. You know, this is going on in our streets here in the States. And Alex talked about earlier, we have a video up for you, about how NATO is now declaring war with Russia. We have that to worry about as well. Take a look at this. Massive wars are something that most people never believe can actually happen until it actually happens. Like a Mount Vesuvius erupting or a Mount St. Helen. Those sleeping mountains seem like they're dead until they awaken and rain down fiery death. Most geopolitical analysts believe that the world is closer to a new world war than ever before. Trump being elected obviously took the defense condition from two and three back to five, back to the lowest condition, and there is some detente going on. But Erdogan, who has had all sorts of problems in Turkey, he basically staged his last election, that's admitted. There's been attempts to overthrow him, there's been multiple coup attempts, everybody knows about that. He came out yesterday, and this has gotten no attention in Western press. Michael Snyder uh, wrote about a free economic collapse blog. It's on Infowars.com. And if you read his headline, it, it's not sensational. It's what's happening. Turkey has declared war on Syria. Does this mean that World War III is about to erupt in the Middle East? Now, let me explain what this really means. It actually means war in the Middle East between NATO and Russia has been declared by NATO. But it doesn't mean that that physical war has started yet. But it's kind of like the horse's gates open and the buzzer sounds and the, and, the, and the gates open. So he's a NATO member. There's a defense pact with all the NATO nations, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, set up for World War II, that if one nation attacks, they will all back that nation. Or if, or if one of those nations is attacked, they will back that nation. So you've got Turkey, gateway to the West, basically playing chicken with the world or holding the world hostage. He came out two days ago and said, if you don't accept millions more migrants and give me millions more dollars and give me more power in the EU, I'm going to just let millions of more Middle Easterners come in out of Syria. All the folks from the Middle East have basically invaded that country, part of the five-year-old Arab Spring that our government's financed openly. So the West starts all this. Turkey's involved. They've been attacking Syria for five years with, with aircraft and with bombers and with, and with artillery and with uh, tanks. But now... Now, this is in the uh, mainline state-run Turkish news. I mean, I didn't just you know, believe this article. I went and looked it up. They've rolled in with tanks, fighter bombers in the north, and they say, quote, we are going to overthrow the tyrant Bashir al-Assad and has declared war on Syria officially. Now, he does that because that triggers NATO. Now, who's got a defense agreement with Syria? And who's been invited in by Syria? And who didn't start this five years ago? Russia. I'm not picking sides here, folks. This is crazy. Well, arguably, we have averted a war with Russia because we've elected Donald Trump. And I had the great opportunity of talking to Dr. Jill Stein about that. And uh, she told my camera guy and I, Rob Jacobson, that in fact, if Hillary Clinton was elected, we would most certainly be going to war with Russia, folks. She led the way in Libya. She's trying to start a, an air war with Russia over Syria, which means if Hillary gets elected, we're kind of going to war with Russia, folks. And she's changing her tune. We have an article article for you, the delusional melodrama of Jill Stein. This was featured on Drudge, and it talks about how most people, they couldn't wait for the grueling, nasty election of 2016 to be over, and Jill Stein apparently wants to keep it going. Of course, she's demanding that recount in specific states. Why? 
Who the heck knows? Because she wasn't a Clinton supporter. She's demanding recounts in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And it really demonstrates the melodramatic nature of this woman. She clearly doesn't care about the country. You know, one report said that she'd accepted 6.1 million in donations. It's up to some reports say 11 now. Why is she doing this? We need to question her motivation, get to the bottom of it. Did she see that Bernie Sanders perhaps took a little money because he stepped aside and she's wanting her cut of that because she's really changed her tune since the last time she spoke to InfoWars. And it's really disconcerting to me as a reporter looking at it going, why in the heck is she doing this now? Because she has no chance of ever becoming president of the United States. It looks like she just wants the attention, frankly. And speaking of attention, I could not pass this story up. I handpicked this just for you to add a little levity to the evening of hard news. Um, I found this article about a parking lot brawl that happened in Southwest Los Angeles. You know, I don't know why we just can't all get along. I can't imagine going through a knockdown drag out two women fighting over a parking space. They take it to the floor. They begin pummeling each other. One of them gets in her car, runs over a hydrant, drives off, nearly takes off the door of the, of the opposing car. When she comes back, we have a little snippet of video footage just for you. Take a look. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Finally tonight, some news about the Democrats. They are in disarray. And frankly, I couldn't be happier. They haven't gotten it together yet. They have reelected Nancy Pelosi now as minority leader in the House. 14 years of this woman. The only reason she's in power is because she's female. 74 years old, coming out of San Francisco. She was unsuccessful um, as speaker. Didn't stop her. Now she's the minority leader. Poor old Democrats. They're just never going to learn. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Nancy Pelosi is going to maintain her seat as the Democrat Party leader. And here is an interesting stat. Since she took that position back in 2013, now bear with me as this number is hard to read, debt is up $13,546,533,671,676.73 since Nancy Pelosi has become the top Democrat in the House. How do you like that? And of course, now... The federal debt is the closest it's ever been to $20 trillion. So there's your legacy, Barack Obama, and there's your legacy, Nancy Pelosi. Can't believe Nancy Pelosi is back after increasing the debt uh, by that significant of a margin. Over $13 trillion since Nancy Pelosi has taken office. She hasn't even been in for 15 years. So she's about a trillion dollars every year. Good job, Nancy. Now, in North Dakota, I'm sure you're aware of the protests that have been going on out there. And as far as my knowledge is concerned, it seems like it has reached a boiling point. Um, and it's a lot colder in North Dakota than it has been, obviously, now that winter has really set in. And you're seeing some pretty crazy things with these protesters. Now, you've got protesters, you've got people protecting the Native American land. They're afraid that the new oil pipeline will um, contaminate their waters and um, contaminate their ancient burial grounds. But you can see crazy videos. There's these protesters, the police are there in full what looks like uh, SWAT gear, and they're spraying protesters that are in the water. Um, so it's really just getting out of hand over there, not getting too much national attention. And it's interesting because in some ways, you know, the police are obviously out of hand. In some ways, I think they're trying to restrain themselves. But this is an interesting situation that we have ongoing in North Dakota. And I'm not really sure how this is going to work itself out. You know that they're going to want to push this pipeline through. Um, they believe that they're not going to contaminate the water. And then on the back end of it, of course, the citizens in North Dakota and the Native Americans in that region, um, they don't care. I mean, even if the water wasn't going to get contaminated, I think at this point it's a matter of principle and they don't want to stand down. That's what all indications are that these protests are not going to stop. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how long these things 
um, develop. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Now, here was an interesting thing that Nick Cannon said yesterday. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is because I give celebrities a hard time when they say things that I disagree with. So we might as well give them uh, fair play whenever they say something positive that I can agree with. Nick Cannon says Planned Parenthood is engaging in modern day eugenics. How do you like that? Now, he has not um, made further comments since saying that, but um, that's a pretty heavy blow right there. And I'm sure that Nick Cannon, um, it doesn't take much to do the research and to figure out exactly how Planned Parenthood was started. And um, beyond that, beyond that it, it could be considered a modern-day eugenics program, how about the fact that it just shouldn't be funded by taxpayers Period. Now, here's an interesting one. More out of the Kanye West gate. Kanye West's brother reveals that his his uh, <clears throat> his brother is terrified that people are trying to kill him. Kanye West has been left so traumatized by his wife, Kim Kardashian's brutal robbery, that he fears his life is now in danger. His stepbrother has claimed. Now, this is interesting for me, considering all the events that have happened here. Uh, regarding Kanye West. His brother does go on to say that the claims that they've said, uh, the reason for hospitalizing um, Kanye, he doesn't believe those allegations that he's on suicide watch or, you know, having a complete mental breakdown or anything like that. He's not buying that. He thinks he's just tired and, um, and is scared for his life. But I'm curious, maybe Kanye West is scared for his life because he dared to support Donald Trump in the face of all of his Illuminati constituents or cohorts there going for Hillary Clinton. Maybe he's scared for his life because he uttered the words Pizzagate and now a potential underground pedophile ring that reaches to the very top is trying to silence him. So maybe that's why he's afraid for his life. Nonetheless, uh, Kanye Westgate, along with Pizzagate, uh, continues to be an interesting story. Now, in the realm of free speech, Reddit to crack down on abuse after CEO is targeted. Of course, this is on the heels of Breitbart, be Breitbart being removed from Apple uh, Store. But this is interesting. You know, Reddit is talking about eliminating uh, certain comments or people making comments that are threatening, that are dangerous, that are agitating. Take note. Uh, Dorsey and Zuckerberg. Reddit is censoring people who are violent agitators, not conservatives. Uh, uh, you know, so you want to see the difference between Reddit and Twitter or Facebook? There's the difference right there, and we've proven that in spades. Now, more from Yahoo. Hillary pizza and phony sex scandal, the power of fake news. So Yahoo, again, demonizing anything against them or pro-Trump as fake news. For more on the Pizzagate scandal, we go back to our reporter, John Bowne. The Washington Times reported today that unidentified White House aides in the Carter, Reagan, and Bush administrations now are being investigated for using the services of a callboy ring. The paper reports that two of the male prostitutes were given a late-night tour of the White House last year. The White House press secretary, Marlon Fitzwater, said he knew nothing of this investigation. NBC's Lisa Myers reports her sources in the U.S. Attorney's Office say the investigation is not focusing on prostitution, but on fraud involving the use of credit cards to pay for the callboy service. An international pedophile ring has been fully operational for decades. Plummeting down the rabbit hole, you will eventually discover the Franklin cover-up, the Jimmy Seville scandal, the Hampstead cover-up, the Elm Guest House scandal, Jeffrey Epstein's Lolita Island, and many others that were eventually buried by a colluding media, and the fact that the general public loses interest because the reality of high-profile pedophilic predators is an alien world and completely repulsive to the average person. But as recently as a week ago, Norwegian police arrested 20 men and were investigating 31 suspects involved in a pedophile network. Deputy Police Chief Gunnar Floystad told reporters that many of the suspects were highly educated and included lawyers and politicians. Prosecutors said the suspects had met on the dark web. The material discovered on the dark web involved children as young as toddlers and included acts of bestiality. According to the local NO, police stressed that their operation uncovered not just one pedophilia network, but several. We have the clear perception that like-minded individuals met with each other in the so-called dark net, where they could talk with one another and cultivate their interest in children in peace, Rikris said. There are several highly educated individuals with high IT skills. They've used used encryption and anonymity to hide their tracks. Head police prosecutor Jane Ringset Heltney said 
at the Sunday press conference. She also said that all of the perpetrators involved are men, and one of the involved men had a pregnant girlfriend and discussed plans with another man to sexually abuse the child once it was born, police said. Also, last week, USA Today reported Portland, Oregon police arrested Terrence Patrick Bean, who had been charged with two felony counts of having sex with a minor last year. Bean raised more than a half million dollars for Obama's 2012 re-election campaign. Bean has been one of the state's biggest Democratic donors and an influential figure in gay rights circles in the state, reports OregonLive.com. He helped found two major national political groups, the Human Rights Campaign and the Gay and Lesbian Victory Fund, and has been a major contributor for several Democratic presidential candidates, including Barack Obama. A search of the Federal Election Commission's campaign finance database turns up thousands in donations every cycle by being to the Democratic Party's most powerful leaders, including Hillary Clinton, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, Senator Dick Durbin, and Representative Barney Frank, among others. As the Pizzagate scandal unfolds, regardless of the mainstream media downplaying of it. Fake news, by the way is not an abstract problem. The owner of a DC pizza restaurant called Common Ping Pong, where I've taken my kids, began receiving death threats after Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit carried viciously phony rumors that the pizza joint was the base for a child abuse ring using underground tunnels led by Hillary Clinton and her campaign chief, John Podesta. It is all a lie. Common Ping Pong owner, James Alephantis, says the restaurant does not even have a basement. Just disgusting. 398 children remain missing in the greater Washington, D.C. area. WikiLeaks revealed that Tony Podesta had mentioned he was still in the torture room. That's why this, yet unsubstantiated document, supposedly taken from the Comet Pizza members-only portion of their website, is so disturbing. Part of it reads, This month we have five fresh pizzas for your enjoyment. We also have four surviving pizzas from last month's session. All are on sale at an extremely low price as they are in poor health and not expected to survive. So a requirement is that you finish eating your pizza after your session. This month's special includes a 30% discount on severe torture. Well, guys, the NFL has had some serious issues with ratings the last couple of weeks. Now, originally they were saying, well, this is because of the presidential election. Well, we're now a week and more removed from the presidential election, and the results are the ratings are still going down. And what are the latest reports we're seeing out of the NFL, Joe Biggs? New York Times has put up an article, ESPN pays top dollar for football, but audience isn't buying. Now, they're paying around $1.9 billion annually, nearly twice what any of its network rival shell out. So here's the thing. What, what are sports all about? It's entertainment, right? You go out to watch NFL games. You go out to watch basketball games. You go out to get out of the house to pull yourself away from what you're stuck in every day. Get and away right from now, it all. Just and and, and this away. year, what's been the most consuming thing for all Americans? This election cycle. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump. Who's going to win? Who's not going to win? Protesting. Hate this and that. Protesting. Yeah. All of this. And it's consuming everybody. So we as consumers, we as Americans, enjoy sports. We love going out to events. We love being entertained because it pulls us away from that. It gives us a minute to, to separate ourselves from that political uh, atmosphere that's been so violent. And just lets us be Americans. Let's us enjoy our freedoms. Hang out with our families. Have a beer. Go tailgate, throw the football, things that are all great, and there's nothing wrong with it. You sold me. Uh, but, <laughs> that but sounds the, good to me. But the NFL has done exactly what they should not do. They are an entertainment organization, and they have now allowed politics Absolutely. to be brought into that. And yep. that, Mr. Goodell, John Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL, is why your ratings are just tanking completely. Well, and let's remember, there was a time where players would get fined or suspended for protesting the national anthem, and we've come a long way now. It's almost endorsed by these leagues, and it's it's taken by storm. I think that it's lost some of its momentum. However, it, the NFL's lost some of its ratings, lost a lot of its viewers. Darren, what, do you, what have you been seeing? Well, ratings have gone down, but I'll never forget watching the Fox News pregame show. This was, oh, maybe about four or five weeks ago. But the big news was Kaepernick kneeling for the national anthem and Jay Glazer, he's the injury report guy for the pregame show. And he said he spent some time in the 
Niners, uh, the 49ers locker room, and he said that Kaepernick right now is by far, and this was before he was starting quarterback, right? So he was still on the bench. He said Kaepernick is by far the most popular player in the locker room, even more popular than the year he took the 49ers to the Super Bowl. And I just said, wow, I could not believe it. But he's not very popular outside the locker room, I could tell you. No, that. there were people that were, if you remember, videos up all on social media, people literally taking the Kaepernick jerseys off their back, mm -hmm. pouring gasoline on them and lighting them on fire as their protest, saying, hey, you know what? If you want to disrespect our country, our freedoms, our way of life, and you want to spit on these veterans, these people who go out and have fought and died for your freedom, to be a snot-nosed little brat who's done nothing your entire life except throw a pigskin, and you make millions upon millions of dollars. Meanwhile, soldiers don't make crap, and you're going to sit here and kneel for the national anthem when these guys don't make jack. Not only that, though, he shows up to, he calls it a, an anti-oppression um, press conference, right? And he shows up wearing a Fidel Castro shirt. So, I mean, this guy is a complete idiot. Well, he doesn't understand what he's talking about. He's ignorant. <laughs> well, when the New York Times article came out last night, I, I tweeted the NFL and I go, no, audiences love football, but we hate your disrespect for our country. Yep. So we choose America over pigskin. The NFL commissioner is just too stupid to see it. Now, the NFL commissioners come out and said that the, the, you know, the tank in the ratings is because the games are too long and this and that. Yeah, I mean, that, a lot of these things have something to do with it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when you have a large audience, a large population of your people that are going there, your fan base are police officers, firefighters, EMT, first responders, Marines, Marines yeah. Army, you know, Air Force, Navy, you know, special op Plus, guys. We've met people. Small we've, business owners. We've talked to people out there in Austin who said they have stopped watching football for that very reason. So I did a I did a we know it's affecting. myself today. Just before we went on and did this segment, because I just wanted to see what people would have to say, I put, has the National Anthem protest at NFL games turned you away from watching football? So 3,000 votes, 45% say yes, 19% said never watched, 13% say kind of, you know, it's really affecting it, and then 22% say no. So there's a large portion of this. So if you're watching this, NFL commissioner, you might want to start pulling those politics out of your entertainment business and allow people to escape that realm and have a little fun. Well, and here's the thing for me, because a lot of those issues, you know, the games lengthening, commercial breaks, um, the rules changing, so where some people don't even think it's football anymore, that's been going on for a while. That's kind of been a sustained change that the NFL's been undergoing, and they've still maintained their audience. They've still grown their audience, but this year really is the first time it's, it's seen taking a major hit where they're freaking out. They don't know what to do with Thursday night football. They don't know what to do with Monday night football. They can't figure it out because they thought this was the election causing it. But you know, guys, I remember a time where the cameraman would walk the sideline during the national anthem and, and you'd see grown men crying. Mm -hmm. You'd yeah. see grown men with tears. And they always show the players face. and the players would do the same thing. Even though they hear it every single week, it still grips them. You oh, know? you, you, you could still... see them mouthing it. You could mm -hmm. see that they actually cared, that it meant something to them, yeah. that they were being represent. Uh, you know, they were representing America on this huge global scale because it's not just people in America who watch the game. You've got people in Mexico, you've got people in Europe, you've got people all over who are watching this game. And that is their view of what America is. So when they see outside of the country that these people are taking a knee, they're not respecting the flag, the national anthem, that shows a lot to these people on the outside that are looking at America. What is America? Are they? It, it looks like we're collapsing from the outside you know, sometimes because it seems like we just don't have a, a grip on things. Meanwhile, you go to other countries like Mexico, you disrespect their flag or their national anthem. You're getting booted the hell out of a soccer game. By the you're, way, you're getting you're kicked out jail. of jail. Hey, you're going to jail. Remember they had a, was it a Sunday night or a Monday night football game in Mexico recently? And the commentating before the game started was, and this was after the election, they said they expected the, the, uh, the Mexico crowd to boo when they sang the national anthem. And they said, be prepared, be ready for it. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen. They were very respectful. So they were trying to say that because of the election, it's caused a, a major division between our countries. And it, it just it didn't work out that way. They were very, they were respectful in Mexico when we sang the national anthem. Well, because they understand that it, it that it's something that they respect. They respect their national anthem. Mm -hmm. They respect their flag, just like at the Olympics. You respect that. Uh, so it's just unheard of to see that these Americans, these rich little snot-nosed little brats, 
that make millions of dollars to literally run around for, you know, a few hours a week. And they can't even have any respect whatsoever. Well, for and the country. people of Mexico aren't, aren't, you know, dumb or ignorant enough to boo the United States. Like, why are you trying to start a war with the United States? Why are you trying to divide the United States? It's just not a good idea. But I'm thinking if I'm a 49ers fan and I'm a patriot and or I'm a fireman or a policeman and I go to the game and I see what Colin Kaepernick said before the game. I see him kneeling for the national anthem. And then he's the guy starting quarterback for my team. And he races down the field. He gets a first down. It's like, how can I cheer for that? I don't want to cheer for that. No, That's, ha that has to be affecting the fan. How many little kids are going and looking up and at these guys? And it's not just Kaepernick either. We're not just picking on Kaepernick. He just was kind of the guy that started this. Yeah, but think about how many kids go to these games with their dads or whatever. And they see these grown men out there and they look up to them. And, and, and they want to be like that. They want to aspire. But mm -hmm. when you see people doing that, they're kind of like, well, you know, dad at home tells me, you know, he's a veteran that, you know, we respect the national anthem, our flag. But this guy, he makes way more than my dad. And he just takes a knee, you know, and that kind of screws with these young, impressionable minds. Yeah. And considering that, you know, some of these minds, they may even see that athlete more than they see their dad. Yeah. Uh, they might look up to that athlete more than they look up to their dad. And just like you were saying that that, you know, can screw with their psychology. Well, I was going to say also it, it's also backfiring in other ways when when like, OK, example, Bud Light had a commercial with Amy Schumer and Seth Rogen, and it was a play on this year's presidential race, and it was called the Bud Light Political Party. Well, everybody knows that Amy Schumer and Seth Rogen are big Hillary supporters, and sales tanked. They had to pull the ad. Yeah, so, and so there's a good example. We can kind of compare that to what's happening in the NFL right now. And I think that more than anything, guys, and I don't know if you'll agree with this, but what we might be experiencing here, and the election of Donald Trump is another example, I think that people are just... They're just sick of the, the mainstream. They're sick of spending their whole life obsessing over something that's fake. They're, they're sick of spending their whole life uh, obsessing over something that doesn't affect their future. So now people are just less interested in football, more interested in the real world. What's going on? Thank you, Joe Biggs. Thank you, Darren McBreen. We'll continue to keep an eye and see if people start to care more about their country than NFL football. That's right. Well, the war on real media in this country has intensified in the wake of a Trump victory. They just don't know what to do with themselves. And they're honestly, Leanne, the, the attacks are pathetic. I'm, of course, joined in studio by Leanne McAdoo to talk about the latest attempt to attack the real media, which is us. They're calling right. us fake news. What do you have for us? Well, I mean, what we're seeing is that them trying to to get answers for the total failure that, that they saw for themselves this past election. And they cannot face the fact they don't want to do any kind of self-reflection you know what did we do to actually cause this it's all now continually pointing the blame this is what happens when you're a perpetual victim class uh the commander-in-chief for instance is blaming the fact that fox news is on in every single bar and that's why uh people widely rejected everything he has stood for with this election that the, the voters made it clear that they rejected everything that he was about right. so he blames fox news being on in every bar. Where, where, what bar? I have literally never walked into a bar that was playing Fox News. What bar is he going to is my question. But, you know, my complaint is you can't step into an airport without seeing CNN. CNN. Um, every major building, it's always CNN pounding. Mm -hmm. and, and something I find really strange, you know, CNN, you mentioned their old tired narrative. They just can't give it up. The elitists, the media elites in this country, they are bes their, their heads are in their hands right now in shame. You know, we know Trump hauled all of the men in one room and scolded them profusely about mm -hmm. a week and a half ago. And they're at the back of the bus right now. Fox News, though, is owned by Rupert Murdoch, which he was a Hillary supporter very openly. Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump did not get very good coverage on Fox News anyway. Right. So it's ironic that he would be blaming Fox News and not Breitbart, Drudge and InfoWars. Which right. I like to, you know, we are kind of responsible for <laughs> underpinning his of legacy that. there. Well, and we all know that not only was CNN 100% in the bag for Hillary Clinton, uh, but they also had NBC, ABC, Saturday Night Live, Yahoo, Google, Facebook. I mean, all Twitter. of these. Twitter. <laughs> they were all in cahoots with the Democratic Party. They still could not win. And rather than self-reflect and say, what did we do? They're doubling down on this. Here's a perfect example of why you lost so profusely. So here's BuzzFeed. They come out with this article today trying to go after a, a beloved TV host, Chip and Joanna Gaines. They're on HGTV. So they're one of TV's most famous Christian couples. 
And their whole article is about the church that they go to and this pastor at their church who um, talks about homosexuality being a sin. And so they say, well, we don't know if the stars share his his uh, take on things against same-sex marriage and, and homosexuality and everything, but they're going to send out the Twitter mob to go find out and attack these people. So they want to destroy these people based on their faith, based on the church that they go to. This is exactly why you lost, because you're continually attacking people in these flyover states or what have you. Meanwhile, they are they are saying, you know, let's not demonize the religion of Islam based on this latest terror attack they don't that took even place. Say it. Can I just say, so NBC, I was watching, I, I cringed through the coverage of the Ohio State attack because I wanted to see, you know, the, what kind of words and language are they using? The word Islam, Muslim, Somalian, nothing came up about this young man, who he was, where he came from, the possible motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even the words lone wolf attack didn't surface. It was just, you know, <laughs> alleged. Uh, it was, everything was alleged, too. I'm like, this actually did happen. And mm -hmm. these are the facts. You know, we've covered them here in Enforce. I know, Alex, you know, it, he go, we go to bat for the the truth here and it's so funny they go out of their way to not only demonize Christians in this country you know these, this lovely couple I actually watched the remodeling show and th this is not a show about faith their faith has, is is very independent their yeah. faith is private it has nothing to do with what they're talking about it's very like, on camera values and I let's love, go let's after them fix anyway your, fix your house it's awesome right. you know and then so they're gonna attack this Christian this church based on their stance on homosexuality whatever meanwhile they're wanting to uphold uh, the religion of Islam and all that, where homosexuality is actually punishable by death. And if you ask anyone who is actively practicing that faith, they also disagree with homosexuality. It's, right. it's very rare that you'll find, you know, even with, within Christianity, you have plenty of, of young people saying, you know, well, I'm gay, whatever. It's like, it's right. kind of a new movement. But for the most part, they disagree with homosexual lifestyle. And let's also point out that <laughs> they're choosing possibly to head the DNC, Keith Ellison, who has ties to the Muslim Brotherhood, a Muslim Brotherhood tied group actually paid for Keith Ellison to visit Mecca in 2008. The House Ethics Committee has actually opened an investigation into him because he failed to disclose that this group that's funded, uh, founded by members of the Muslim Brotherhood, paid for him to make this pilgrimage trip. And this is who they want to now head the DNC. So that's what I'm saying. They just, they're, they're not even self-aware they They're just not. think everybody else out there that voted for donald trump and that why they voted against what they nationalists did. that are racist bigots that are homophobic none of that's true by the way and you bring up this excellent point about keith ellison they're trying to throw anybody against the wall to see who sticks frankly and i cannot think of a worse choice following donna brazil in that catastrophe and they would want a unifier and the things that he said about fidel castro the past <laughs> couple of days it's like wait a second who are you? What <laughs> what news source are you possibly getting your information from? You're like, oh, wait a second. You come straight out of CNN, and everything he says is so inflammatory and so divisive, mm -hmm. and yet he's the unifier that the DNC has picked. They do not want a unifier. I think they've made that clear. Right. It's like you, but they you, want to say we're the great dividers out here, anyone that disagrees with them. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned uh, Fidel Castro, and, of course, we saw that viral video where the college students in the nation were saying that they prefer Fidel Castro to Trump. Mm -hmm which is insane, uh, but there was a recent poll that just came out saying that fewer people now, there's a record number of people across the Western world who think democracy is is, is not essential. Like mm -hmm. few people think it's even essential to have the right to vote. When did communism become cool? You know, these kids that are spouting this communist rhetoric, you know what, visit, a, visit North Korea before and come back and let me know how that goes for you. If you right. really want to live under communism and communistic rule, be my guest. Just don't try to bring it I here. I will pay for your ticket we to Venezuela. Your ticket. I mean, come on. <laughs> Cuba, let's not forget what happened to the Cuban people. They were, you know, a lot of them were hauled in front of firing squads. Anybody that politically opposed him, mm -hmm. anybody jail, that was no due out. process, uh, no right to create her own wealth, you know, very hard lifestyle. But, oh, he produced a lot of doctors coming out of what medical school I don't really right. you know care to know but it's God like, forbid if you on. have milk or eggs or bread to feed your family but there's you, right. tons of doctors you can go and visit hence communism so, is, is fantastic yeah and those doctors are making ten dollars a day or right. what they're making just the same because everyone makes the same regardless of the amount of education you receive mm -hmm. so it's 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 ridiculous but that that's why I think we're seeing a lot of people uh, actually getting behind this censorship and actively going against the First Amendment because it hurts mm -hmm. their feelings, right. which is why we see this petition going around to 
um, tell Twitter to ban Donald Trump. Twitter actually says they haven't ruled out banning Donald Trump, the president-elect, from Twitter if he gets too unruly. We have Apple actually purging the Breitbart News app from the iTunes store. Going back to Twitter for just a minute, because this is a, such an insane story. I'm so glad you brought it up. So Jack Dorsey should cut Trump a check because prior to Trump, who the who got on Twitter? That's right. what I want to know. I mean, yeah. he made Twitter he catapulted Twitter. Your bottom line exponentially increased because of Donald Trump. Seriously, you know, every tweet for the first time. A news story was about Trump's tweet. Seriously. So <laughs> the fact that you would hurt your own bottom line because you're so politically backward that you cannot deal with reality. What does that say about you? You know, people are, are starting to, to shift towards Gab. Mm -hmm. I would encourage anybody listening to us to go ahead and invest in Gab. They're saying it's going to be the new Amazon mm -hmm. um, in 10 years time. And Twitter... Basically, you know, who cares about Twitter anyway? We're, we're required to, you know, kind of we have to kind of be on social media. But I also like mine too. If we're going to get away from Facebook, mm -hmm. but you were talking about the bottom line. So here is a uh, Kellogg's brand is actually pulling off of Breitbart as well. So based on what all this politically correct BS that CNN and all these they're really trying to hammer on, it's white supremacists. Trump is filling his cabinet with these white supremacists of Breitbart, Steve Bannon, and on all of that. So now these people, this army, rage army of social justice warriors is telling Kellogg's, how dare you put your ads on their website? Mm -hmm. So now they're taking, you know, Pringles, Pop-Tarts, all these different advertisements. Warber Parkley, uh, Parkies, Warber Parkley, I can't say that word, whatever. Those <laughs> glasses, they're taking the advertisements <laughs> off the website. Right. And this is going to hurt their bottom line they because don't you're going to have a lot of people. They don't care if they go bankrupt as long. You know what? It's like the hissy fit, the two-year-old hissy fit <laughs> on the floor. I don't care what happens as long as I get my way. This is so, it's absurd. You mentioned Breitbart being pulled. Breitbart had 168 million people in traffic visit their site in October alone. That is explosive. How many did CNN have? I'm guessing it exactly. wasn't 168 million. And they don't care. <laughs> they can let them go bankrupt as far as I'm yeah. concerned. We are running out of time. We no, have the band will be playing on the ship as it goes That's down. That's right. Tiny violins. <laughs> uh, thank you for checking us out. Be sure to tune in tomorrow while you're at it. Download our app, infowars.com forward slash app. I'm Margaret Howell, joined in studio by Leanne McAdoo.